Hello, I'm Kyle, and in today's video, I'm gonna share with you a few tips and tricks about a special type of distribution within the cavalry duplicators. Let's jump in. To be even more specific, there are three distribution types within the duplicator that I call additive distributions. And what this really means is that they work in conjunction with other distribution types to give you better control over your duplicates. Two of these have to do with the order in which the duplicates inherit their index. So we'll do a quick primer on this before we jump into the distribution type. So if I go to the viewport settings here, in the bottom right there's a gear. I'm gonna click this and go into draw debug information and check that. When I have my duplicator selected, I can see the index for each object. So here with the grid distribution, the typical order is from bottom left to top right. And that's the way that this distribution is going to assign the indexes to these objects every time. And now if I were to decrease the size of this, we can also demonstrate the order in which these are drawn on. So with duplicates, it will always be that the draw order is the first index zero to the last. So eight will always be on top and zero will always be on the bottom. But sometimes this isn't exactly how I like this order to be. So I can change the distribution type to something else, like maybe let's go circle for a second and go six. And we can see this being reiterated here, zero on the bottom, five on top as well. But you can see the distribution has changed entirely. I cannot really use those in conjunction with one another, at least not in this method. So I'll go back to grid. And then what I'd like to do now is select from the distribution menu, the sort distribution. And you can see what happens is that now we have the distribution selected for sort. And underneath of that, there is an input distribution of grid. So we have added the sort as sort of the parent distribution to this grid, which is our actual distribution type. But this gives us a new set of options. You can see the input distribution has a dotted line connecting all of the relative properties of that distribution type. But underneath of this, we have the input distribution functions. So we have a mode for horizontal. And you can see, if you look over here, the order in which these duplicates have inherited their index has already changed. It's still bottom left, but it's going to assign them up this row and then to the right and then to the right. So it's changed and now we can change it to vertical if we like. So now it'll go from top to bottom and we can reverse it. And this is a good way to get a lot of control over the order of your duplicates. Sort even has two additional ways to organize these objects. And in the mode, if you change this to distance from centroid, what's going to happen is that the objects that are closest to the center point of the duplicator will get assigned to the first index if we don't reverse it. And then the ones that are furthest from it, really the ones on the corners here, are further than the ones that are just on the sides in the middle here. So these on the bounds get assigned to the last indices. And then we can also do distance from target. We can take a target object like a null and drag this in as the reference for that target. And now the object that is closest to this target object will be assigned to index zero. And if I go to duplicator and then I just drag around this target object, you can start to see that the things that are closest to the target are the ones that are on the bottom of the draw order, or we could reverse it so that they're always the ones that are on top. So let's reverse that and then just drag around this target. So we can determine exactly which object inherits that ID eight and ID zero. Now this index order is also how behaviors are applied to these objects. So if I were to go into the duplicator, let's go right click shape scale and add a behavior stagger. You can see the largest one is the one at the end of this chain, the last duplicate and the smallest one, index zero, is now invisible because the scale is zero. And this is the way that behaviors by default are applied, they follow the index. And you can change that by manipulating the graph here. You can say that I want the minimum to be index zero, or I want the minimum to be index eight, or the last index in whatever the series is. So you can manually manipulate it here, or you could also just do it by reversing the order of the duplicator, if we just reverse that from target. Now, what if I wanted to add some randomness to this? 
Actually, real quick, I want to hide the stagger or reverse this so that I can always see the duplicates. So I want the largest one to always be on the bottom of the stack, so we'll just flip that here. And then in the duplicator, I'll go to the input distribution, and then where it says grid, not sort, but grid, I will select shuffle. And what this will allow me to do is add randomness to the way that the IDs are assigned while keeping some of the order that we're determining from the sort. And because the actual distance from the target is absolute, we actually have to change it to something else like horizontal or vertical in order to really visualize this. But essentially what's happening is we have another option for, for reverse. We can just change the order of these front to back, or we can shuffle them by just turning on shuffle. And then we have a seed attached to that. And that will allow each object in these uh, columns here to get a new seed assigned to it as to which index that's actually being assigned to. And you can see when they're in conjunction with the sort, it will always be that the rows, because of their distance from left to right, will have uh, 0, 1, and 2. And then the middle will always have 3, 4, and 5. And then the right will always have 6, 7, and 8. But the order in which they are vertically, given their indices, is changing when we change the seed. Now the last of the additive distributions is the mask. And the mask, you would think intuitively, oh, just masks duplicates out. But more specifically, it actually removes them from the distribution stack. So if we go into this duplicator again, under the input distribution where it says grid, let's go down to mask. And you can see that this is now in the stack. And we have these three additional distributions on top of our original grid. And what mask allows you to do is take an object, any object of your choice, a shape, assign it to this mask, and then you can move this mask around to reveal or hide duplicates. And you can see what's happening is that they're actually being removed entirely from this distribution. They are no longer uh, spawning. There's no object there. There is only what's available based on what is inside of this, uh, this mask shape that we've created. So that about covers it for the additive distributions. You can use each of them individually or in conjunction with one another, like this if you follow the right order. And your input distribution will maintain the ability to just change this on the fly and keep whatever values you have going on. And uh, we can just play with this infinitely until we get something that we like. I hope this opens up your mind to some new possibilities for getting better control over your duplicates within the duplicator in Cavalry. Until next time, work smarter, not harder.